everyone, both with us in church and watching at home. Welcome to our Harvest Festival. Somewhat different this year because obviously we don't have our young people with us and we can't all bring process up with our gifts because of restrictions. But it's still an occasion when we do very much give thanks to God for all the gifts that he does give us and for the wonders of the world around us, even when things are a bit difficult. Um, just a couple of general notices. The collection is at the back, or you can use, there's a link on up to our outreach online giving page on the, with the service description online. And welcome to our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So, as we come into God's presence, we still our hearts and minds, and we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now we join in that hymn of praise for God's creation, the Gloria, which we stand to say together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please sit down. So as we can't have everybody processing up the gifts, we're going to have them brought up in a trolley for us to bless them. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, Lord, we ask that you will bless these gifts. Don't be a little of all that you have given to us. And we ask that they may be used in your service to the benefit of your people. For your name's sake. Amen. prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, the forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before. We may run the way of your commands and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Now our readings for today. And our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Though, lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king, who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to all those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they wouldn't come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets, and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel passage this morning is a much darker version of the parable as it's told in Luke of the Great Banquet. In Luke's story, the invited guests do come up with reasons to get out of going to the party. But here, they don't just give polite excuses, they respond with mockery, murder and mayhem. And moreover, in Matthew's version, this is followed by an overwhelmingly violent reaction from the would-be host. He destroys both the murderers and their city. And even then, we're not left with a hall full of guests and a happy ending. There's a bizarre twist at the end when one guest who arrived without his wedding robe is bound hand and foot and thrown into the outer darkness for weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what's it all about? It's not exactly a happy, joyful tale for a celebration like today of harvest. But taken in context, it does offer a message of hope, as well as a warning. In that first passage I read from Isaiah, we heard God's promise for all of welcome into his kingdom. And there's this picture which is more reminiscent of harvest, a feast of rich food and fine wines prepared for all peoples. The very best meats, the very finest wines are going to be offered the shroud, the sheet that covered all people will be destroyed. In other words, death, the enemy of all, will be swallowed up forever. And everyone's tears will be wiped away. This is a vision of universal salvation, of happiness for all, God eternal. 
And this is the picture which would have immediately come into the minds of Jesus' hearers when he began his parable of the great feast or the great banquet. So this, they knew what they were expecting. And I think what he's doing in these violent touches is deliberately to shock them, to make people think, instead of taking things for granted. God's original invited guests were the people of Israel, who turned their backs on his generosity and murdered his messengers, the prophets, who were sent to invite them into his kingdom. Jesus' hearers would have realised that and they'd have understood his message, that because the Jewish nation refused the invitation, it's now going to go to those, those outside the Jewish nation. But I think, as well as being a message for Jesus' hearers, there's definitely a message for us nowadays as well. The point is, it's not only the people of Israel who have failed to accept God's invitation. People from everywhere are still doing so now. Now, if you think in terms of the story, this reaction is crazy. You're offered to a free spread, free food, free drink of the finest quality. Why on earth would you pass up on it? And in the same way, it's equally crazy that people pass up on God's free offer of love and forgiveness and eternal life in his kingdom. Why on earth do people refuse such an offer? Well, if we look in our story, one set of people seem to refuse because they want to carry on with their business uninterrupted. They've got jobs to do. They've got farms to see to. And that's often the problem. People don't often consciously reject God. It's more a question of putting the wrong things first. They put material wealth and security before spiritual. They get God's invitation. It's not exactly torn up. But as it were, it slips to the bottom of the pile. It gets lost sight of, squeezed out of consideration. We can always go to church another week, pray another day, but another time never actually comes. Time slips by, and the wrong set of values, and the wrong way of life is built up, and so the invitation is never actually accepted. People never get to the party. The other set of people in the story responds more angrily and violently to the invitation as if they feel insulted by it. There are people who don't like anything that questions their way of life, anything that challenges them. Or perhaps sometimes people's pride won't allow them to accept things that are offered freely. Or perhaps People's nature makes them so blind that they cannot see and understand real goodness, even when it is in front of them for the taking. But I do wonder sometimes if the reason people don't respond to the invitation is because of the way it's offered. When we go out as God's messengers, do we make the invitation sound attractive? We can sometimes make God's offer seem rather negative, like a list of don'ts rather than something life fulfilling. And I'm afraid our lives, as well as our words, can put others off. If people don't want to be the kind of people we are, then they won't want to follow the faith we profess. It's interesting that the man who's not in the correct wedding clothes is thrown out. Is our appearance appropriate for God's party? Do we radiate joy and hope and praise? Do we look as if we're celebrating, as though we're guests at the greatest feast ever? If we can do this, then perhaps we can make God's invitation seem irresistible, because people will want whatever we're having. The other challenge is to show that we believe God's invitation is for all. That the outcasts on the thoroughfares of life whom no one wants and who are welcome nowhere else are welcome in this church and in God's family and that they are immeasurably dear to God. 
That's the message of harvest. God's blessings are the gift of his amazing love, which he shares with everyone. And they are there for all to share, for all eternity. We need to remember this and communicate this to others, not only at harvest time, but always. So we join in the creed as we express our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thanks for all those who work in our shops. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world, for those in places of the world where they face persecution for their faith. Pray for the Uyghur Muslims in China. We pray for Christians in China, North Korea, in parts of Africa and the Middle East. We pray for the church here in 
our country. For Stephen, our Archbishop, for Paul and Sarah, our bishops, This week is Prisons Week, so we pray for all prison chaplains, especially for those working in chaplains in our diocese. We pray for Matthew and for Sarah, for Kate and for Sue. And in Prisons Week prayer, Lord, you offer freedom to all people. We pray for those in prison. Break the bonds of fear and isolation that exist. Support with your love prisoners, their families and friends, prison staff and all who care. Heal those who have been wounded by the actions of others, especially the victims of crime. Help us to forgive one another, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly together with Christ in his strength and his spirit, now and every day. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in any kind of need. In particular this week, we pray for those who have issues with their mental health, for an end to the stigma which surrounds mental health. We pray for our mental health services, especially those here in Diamond. Pray for our NHS, especially those of us who are dealing with the second wave of the COVID pandemic. We pray for all those who are isolated because of COVID, for those who live in fear. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who mourn, for those whose grief is raw and recent, for those who keep the anniversaries of a loved one. We pray, Lord, that you will be with them, that they may feel your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And leave a space for you to offer your own prayers to God. If you are at home, you may wish to type them in the comments below.
and also with you. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to dying, to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name ever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. 
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting this worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Matthew and St. Luke and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
so we pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints forever. Father of all, we, we give, give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who spirit light give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.